Today, I want to talk about a 23C new feature that addresses an old age problem, row locking. The examples I'll give will be simple, but the real world problems that this is aimed at are often complex. Lock-free reservation is a powerful facility which all DBAs and developers may come to appreciate. In terms of transactional integrity, sometimes known as ACID compliance, Uncle Oracle will of course look after you with the default isolation level of read committed. That means no one can see your uncommitted changes and if they try to change the same rows that you are working on, they will wait. However, this can cause the whole system to lock up if the locking problem escalates from session to session. I'm going to give a simple example using tables from the OE demonstration schema. We have a table of products. Each product, product ID and a name. Then we have a table of warehouses. Again, identified by ID and a name. And lastly, there's a table of inventories, which sits between the other two. An inventories table says that there is this much of this product in this warehouse. A simple query. Select product ID, product name, warehouse ID, warehouse name, quantity on hand, from products, joins to warehouses, join to inventories, and I'll just get the first 10 rows. And this shows me that there are 100 of product 1729, chemicals, RCV, whatever that is, 100 of those in warehouse 3, New Jersey. Now, if in one session, I try to issue 20 of that product, it's going to succeed like this. Update inventories, set quantity on hand equals quantity on hand minus 20, where product ID is 1729 and warehouse ID is three. No problem. The problem occurs if I try to do the same thing or something similar in another session, issue the same query and it hangs. This is basic stuff. This is going to hang. And so in this session, we commit or roll back. And then all of a sudden that one comes free. I'll roll that back as well. Now, in a complex transaction affecting many tables, this sort of thing can be disastrous. For example, imagine you're, I don't know, designing a business trip. That might involve booking train tickets, flights, hotel rooms, car hire. You could spend half an hour juggling all the details before you finally commit everything. With many concurrent users, that problem is going to escalate and the whole application can lock up. To avoid this, developers will often implement an optimistic locking policy. They'll design their code so they don't actually lock any rows until they're ready to commit the entire complex transaction. And before the commit, the code will have to check whether any of the rows they are interested in have in the meantime been changed by somebody else. That does solve the concurrency problem but making the checks is bad for performance and will involve a lot of coding if the transactions are complex. It's perhaps worth mentioning here that Apex Application Express does have an optimistic locking mechanism built into it, which may be useful. But failing that, coding optimistic locking is a lot of work. The 23C facility that may help with this issue is called lock-free reservation. It's a declarative technique, so the developers don't need to do anything. We mark the columns that are being concurrently updated as reservable, like this. Alter table inventories, modify, quantity on hand, reservable. And now in one session, I'll update the row as I did before, issuing 20 items. 
It succeeds, of course. And in the other session, I'll do the same thing, updating the same row. And what do you know? It succeeded. No blocks. Then I'll commit in both cases. That works. Commit in the other one. No problem. And if we go back to the quantities, originally it was 100. I've issued two lots of 20. And it has indeed, quantity on hand has dropped down to 60. So what's going on? Well, it's easy enough to reverse engineer the mechanism. Look at the tables in my schema. Set table name from user tables. There's this odd thing here called Sys Reservation Journal 79638. I wonder what that is. Describe it. There are some aura columns there. And then we've got product ID, warehouse ID, quantity on hand OP for operation, quantity on hand reserved. This table was created when I made the column quantity on hand reservable. And those two columns are the primary key of that table. Right now, there'll be nothing in it. Select star from the journal table. It's empty. But if I do a DML against the reserved column, deduct another 20. If you look at the table now, There we see that there's an active transaction which was an update against that table, that product from that warehouse, minus 20. This is the journal table that records details of all the uncommitted DMLs. And they will only be applied to the actual table, which will then, the row will then be locked, of course, on commit. A powerful facility that programmers can make use of without needing, in some cases, often without needing to modify their code at all. To conclude, managing concurrency in a multi-user environment has always been a challenge, particularly when you have complex transactions that may take time to complete. This new facility, which is very simple to use, may be the answer. It does, of course, have some limitations. I've only skimmed the surface of it, but we can help with sorting them out. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel.